With roughly 2.5 million people in the UK suffering from diabetes, it's no surprise that new research says we're facing a diabetes time bomb. And a new study also shows that those people with diabetes are often risking health complications by not coding their blood glucose meters properly. Now with me today is Dr Hilary Jones. Hi there. Now what exactly does this mean? Well, someone with diabetes will get much better control of their blood sugar if they're regularly testing it using a, a blood glucose meter. Now, a blood glucose meter is a small device about the size of, uh, half the size of a, a mobile phone. So it slips in your top pocket of your jacket very easily, or you carry it in your trouser pocket. And basically, you use these things with a testing strip. The key thing up to now is that you have to calibrate that particular test strip to the meter. And up to 200,000 people are not doing that properly. Now, there is a new meter called the Essentia Contour, which doesn't require any coding or calibration at all. And why this is important is because if you don't calibrate your machine, you get an inaccurate result. And that means you don't know what your correct insulin dose should be uh, if you require insulin, and you don't know whether your blood sugar is adequately controlled, whether you're a type 1 or a type 2 diabetic. And if you don't know whether it's controlled, you run extra risks of the long-term complications of diabetes, which include heart disease, kidney disease, and eye damage. It really couldn't be simpler. The first thing to do is to prepare the meter by inserting a test strip, uh, and that activates the meter. The next thing to do is to use a lancet to take a tiny sample of blood from the tip of your finger. And when you've got a, a drop of blood, a small bead of blood, you attach it to the end of the test strip where it will be drawn up into the testing part and then within five seconds you'll see a result flash up on the screen on the meter. Now when it comes to diabetes you of course have got quite a personal interest in this haven't you? I have uh, a, a son, my eldest son uh, developed uh, type 1 diabetes when he was seven. Since then has monitored his blood sugar levels himself, he's become a mini expert in diabetes, he leads a completely normal life um, he's now 27, he's 6 foot 5, he's in his last year at medical school and because he's 6 foot 5 and rather large I would never argue with him or tell him off anymore. But, but I am very proud of him because you know, he is an example of someone who keeps a very close eye on what they do as regards to their lifestyle. He's active physically, he's careful about what he eats but he can eat more or less whatever he wants to provided he's careful the rest of the time and it doesn't, um, it doesn't set him back in any way. So finally, what other things could be done in the UK to improve the lives of people with diabetes? I, I think we, we need to raise awareness more. We could screen more people and encourage people to have screening uh, at whatever age uh, to test for diabetes, to recognise it more quickly. We know there are half a million people out there right now who have diabetes but don't know it because they have the late onset type 2 diabetes which doesn't immediately cause any symptoms and doesn't for many years until it causes problems. So more screening, more awareness, and I suppose greater availability of these meters and this specialist care in, in hospital clinics so we can keep a tighter control over people's blood sugars. If we can keep blood sugar levels to within normal limits, which for most people is between three and a half and six and a half, then we know that we can avoid those long-term risks. Dr. Hilary Jones, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure.